What's up guys? I'm going to be talking about my, uh, I guess, Diablo 3 Witch Doctor Jade Harvester character. Uh, this isn't something new. This is Diablo. You know, this is a pretty old concept, but some people wanted, wanted me to talk about it, wanted me to explain the character a little bit more, so I will. Maybe some of you guys out there will find it useful if for some reason you can't find a guide for it. Um, but I'll talk about my character specifically and some of the things that I needed to do to work around the fact that you don't have all the gear available to you. You know, it is the beginning of the season, so you can't really expect to go towards a certain build simply because it is very RNG if you find all the gear necessary to run it. So this character went through a couple evolutions. You know, we uh, we worked towards the carnival, we worked towards the uh, mask of Jarem, we had to work towards stuff like uh, where is this Taskers, Taskers and Theo that I've currently lost, like this one? But it was kind of what what pushed me to do uh, Harv uh, Jade Harvest is the fact that I kept on finding ancient items for it, you know, ancient shoulders, ancient chest piece, I believe, ancient boots. I think that's about that's about it. And in general, the items that I found were very good rolls, but I couldn't find a quetz at all, which is the core item of this build. Quetz. Uh, strong arm braces and obviously a furnace, but a furnace is very difficult to find. So, since we don't have all the items yet, I kind of had to work around a couple of things like I've said before, and I'm going to be explaining it. So, okay, the core thing of the build is the Jade Harvest set, which means that we do it for the 6 set bonus. Soul Harvest consumes your damage over time effects on enemies, instantly dealing their remaining damage. So, essentially, we dot something up. I actually have the wrong skill selected here. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was boosting some friends. So, we have the wrong skill selected here. Let me just fix this real quick. This goes there. This goes... Well, this is obviously... You can do it however you want. This is just what I like. And then, go with Pestilence. And I believe that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, and of course... This, and I'm going to be explaining everything. Okay, so we dot a target up, we use Haunt and Locust Swarm. Locust Swarm is more of an AoE skill that deals a little bit less damage. Haunt is basically single target, you use two spirits, but it's basically a single target. You use this, this, and boom, mobs, mobs blow up when you Jade Harvest, right? You also debuff with the Piranhas, and since it knockbacks, it does benefit from the Strong Arm Braces. That's like a basic rotation. But let's go, let's go, like, more over the skills. I don't know, I'm pretty terrible at this, guys. You have to excuse me. I'm still a bit new to Diablo. I'm trying to explain this, but it's, it's, uh, you know, this is my first video like this. So, yeah, again, our main ability that we scale through cold damage and stuff like that is Haunt. We use the release two spirits with every cast rune, which is called Resentful Spirits. Uh, these spirits are actually very smart. They travel a long distance after the target is dead and seek new, seek out new targets. So uh, you can you can definitely use them quite a bit. We spam them. They don't cost any mana. However, mana was a problem, but I'm gonna go over that in a minute. Uh, the other ability that we use is piranhas. We use the piranha piranado rune. <laughs> oh god, this video. We use this. Um, Simply because it's a lot of crowd control, for 4 seconds the mobs basically cannot move. Uh, the cooldown is increased to 16 seconds, but we do use Grave Injustice, which reduces the cooldown with the kills. That's mainly what we rely on, on cooldown reduction, so it's actually not that big of a deal. We can rotate this freely, and this also applies a uh, debuff that makes it so that we deal 15% more damage to everything uh, that we attack, and due to... Creeping Death, we uh, this lasts basically indefinitely. I think it's about uh, about five minutes that this lasts, from from what I understand. Uh, our main ability as to for dealing damage is Soul Harvest. We use the Vengeful Spirit rune. You can kind of experiment with some of the other runes. I found the pure damage is just straight up the best. Um, so yeah, this gives us Int, uh, but it also makes it thanks to the Jade Harvest set, makes it so that when we debuff the mob, everything deals damage at once, which is 
crap ton of damage. We use zombie dogs, I use the lifelink build, this is a hardcore build and we need some sort of mitigation. It is very difficult to run solo rifts as a witch doctor with this set. Uh, not necessarily very difficult in the way that it's undoable, but you have to know what you're doing. You have to be able to dodge. It's uh, it's kind of skill based as compared to maybe like a pet build or something like that. You basically have to not get hit. You have to be really controlled. You rely on your cooldown. Rely on those mob kills, and that way you can stay very safe. It's just something that you need to learn. But zombie dogs definitely help, and you know having mitigation for the damage that will be dealt to you anyway at times is very good for a hardcore league, right? You can see that my toughness and my damage is pretty okay, you know? I'm still carrying the character. Spirit Walk basically become invulnerable for 3 seconds. This is very good because again we have a lot of uh, cooldown reduction. We reset our cooldowns so even though we can only Spirit Walk for 3 seconds and it's a 15 second cooldown, typically, you know, uh, it refreshes pretty much immediately because we mainly use this in a way that we well we either avoid damage or get in position to deal damage so uh, we either are refreshing the cooldowns by default or refreshing them by killing stuff and then locust swarm uh, I use this is our AOE ability it spreads very nicely it spreads to multiple mobs so you don't have to cast it too much uh, it, it does cost a lot of mana, so you have to be careful with it. Uh, I use the Pestilence Room, uh, which makes it so that it spreads twice as fast. This is incredibly helpful. Uh, it makes it so that pretty much every time you cast this and you put something in a Piranado, uh, in a Piranhas, uh, you know they're pretty much all going to be all going to be debuffed, and then we can just pop them, no problem. So. That's pretty much it. When it comes to the passives, uh, Creeping Death is incredibly inco important. It makes it so that your Haunt, Locust Swarm and the damage amplification from Piranhas, like I've explained before, lasts almost forever. Almost forever, apparently in this game, is about 5 minutes. Um, so the way this the way this works is that yeah it, it lasts for about 5 minutes and it continuously deals the damage that it should be dealing. But... Okay, maybe maybe let's finish up with the passives and then I'll explain uh, like the items because items are the core thing for this game. This is going to be a long video, which I'm really sorry about, but it has to be a long video. I'm going to be replaying the music too. So, Grave Injustice, very, very, very needed. Reduces our cooldown by one every time we kill an enemy. Uh, gives us life, gives us mana, that's a ton of regen, really helpful, really amazing. It's just... This is what the build is based off of, reducing cooldowns. Spirit Vessel, uh, Spirit Walk, and Soul Harvest spells cooldowns reduced by 2, which is huge. And then on top of it, it is a hardcore leak, so if we happen to fall in a really bad situation or get one shot or something like that, this will prevent it and we can maybe get in a position to regenerate or you know get out of the sketchy situation. Pierce of the Veil, it increases all your damage by 20, increases also the mana cost, but it's definitely worth it. I highly recommend you use it, uh, even if you have mana problems. I think that it's still worth it, Just you just have to learn how to use your Haunt and Locust Swarm more efficiently, or the f do the fix that I did. So, the fix that I did, I use a Zuni Master Strings of Skulls, because I, I, I have an Ancient Mojo, and then my other Zuni Masa item that gives me the three set bonus is the Zuni Masa's Pox. We obviously use a Ring of Royal Grandeur, this way we can use a Quelt and five pieces, and that also gives us the three set bonus. Uh, this is while this is an amazing item, this is a really crap one. For some reason, I couldn't find a better Zuni Masa. You do want crit, you do want crit damage. Uh, cooldown reduction is really good, so it kind of works out. But yeah, this is what I'm working with right now. Again, the character is not super optimized because it is only a couple days into the league. Um, okay, so let's let's explain why Quetz is such a necessity for this build. So the way the way this works is well, the primary thing that we take this for is Locust Swarm and Haunt now deal their damage in half of the normal duration. Uh, which, with the Creeping Death, uh, it boosts it up to about 60 seconds worth of damage. 
I, from what I remember, um, if you would just use, if you would just use Jade Harvest and then Soul Harvest on like a Haunt and a Locust Swarm, it would deal about 30 seconds worth. Uh, due to this, it's doubled, so about 60 seconds worth of damage. Uh, but it doesn't remove the dot, which is really cool. So you can just dot up this, boom. Pop this, pop the, pop this, uh, the uh, soul harvest, and then the dots still stay there, or the haunt moves on to the next mob. You know, the the locust worm keeps spreading, so that's really cool. But yeah, this is the primary item for our build. You don't want regen, and you don't really want resist. You want a socket. Uh, a socket is very important because you can put a gem with uh, reduced cooldown of all skills, uh, which I can't stress enough is amazing. So you you have to get that. I sadly cannot get a good quest. I'm trying really hard, guys. I just can't get it. It's like impossible for me. But I'll keep trying, and hopefully uh, by the time I'm kind of done with this season, I'm going to have some some proper gear to show you guys what's up. And yeah, the the rest of the gear is pretty basic. You either want life or haunt damage on your shoulders. Uh, when it comes to the additional stat, I mean you can get int. I would probably recommend Int, Vitality, uh, Life Percent, and then your Haunt Damage. As for your Amulet, I'm using a Black Thorns because I'm using also a Black Thorns Belt. This gives me the set bonuses, but also I get 20 Cold Damage, Int, and Crit Chance. Instead of the damage, you'd want uh, Crit Damage to boost your damage even further, but... Again, not something that I could get. Uh, Jade Harvest set. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. In Vitality resists, you know, triple sockets. Pretty much everything that you would always get. Uh, try and obviously on the secondary slots, try and get stuff like reduced duration of control impairing effects, and also additional resists that I believe I don't have too much. Like on this, I have arcane resistance threat on the secondary set. Furry gloves, in Vitality, crit chance, crit damage pretty basic stuff that's pretty much all you need on your gloves you want to get again cold skills we pick cold skills specifically because it scales haunt the best and that's our primary damage source right so we try and get cold damage on everything in vitality crit chance um, this is pretty much what we will always do I recommend strong arm braces because of the enemies hit by knockback suffer 27% more damage for 5 seconds when they land and apparently uh, Piranado counts as as a knockback so when they're getting sucked in they're actually getting knockback so this gets triggered and it boosts, us, uh, boosts our damage tremendously uh, for the bell like I've explained before I'm using black thorns so you can use something like a witching hour you know something more damage oriented uh, completely up to you and up to the uh, I guess league that you're playing in uh, again I'm using a Zuni Master's Pox honestly if you can get a unity just get a unity uh, you can get rid of the mana problems by having less uh, skill cooldowns uh, but I without the socket I just can't do it so the mana problem shouldn't be a problem later but for now I have to I have to use something like this even though it's really really crappy but it does have the reduced cooldown of all skills so that helps a little bit um, the other ring is the necessary ring of royal grandeur so that we can use this I mean this only becomes a necessity around torment 5 I'd say that's where you really start to f if you don't have this item you should really start to feel that you're not really keeping up with the damage as you should and yeah, the pants are Jade Harvest Courage, uh, Int Vitality Resist is what I would go with. Obviously, again, secondary would be Resist, Double Socket, pretty basic stuff. I go for Int just because it gives uh, gives me a lot of damage, obviously, and then also Int on top of it gives some Resist from what I remember. Yeah, you can see, uh, I believe 10 Int is 1% Resist, so even something like this gives us 28. Uh, Hope I'm right on that one. Uh, Ancient Legendary Ceremonial Knife. This is what I'm using. Sadly, it has chance to deal 17% uh, area damage instead of something like uh, just straight up damage. But I decided to roll the vitality on it. The way it has a socket, I used one of these Ramal Ramaladani's gifts. 
this is what I used on it so that's the way why it, that's the reason why it has so many stats and on top of it a socket I have a kind of a replacement dagger but I really want to be cautious about keeping this until for instance I get something like a cookery or something like that right uh, obviously the best in hand like the best in slot is a furnace which boosts our damage tremendously it is a two-handed weapon so you really want to go for something slow slow as possible simply because uh, the slower the, our, our, our damage is based off of our weapon damage and it's a dot you put it on it on the mob once and it stays there you can't stack it so the more damage it deals on a single hit so to say the better so using a fast weapon is not really a good option but uh, it does work out and on a hardcore league it does provide a lot of defense with something like this you know I'm using it the Zuni Masses simply because again it's an uh, ancient uh, it gives us mana region it gives us a three set bonus it has crit so for damage it still works for me however some people I've seen and what I what I did in the past I used the uh, wormwood um, this makes it so that locust worm is cast on nearby enemies every second I feel like this is something more for speed running it basically autocasts our locust swarm and we don't have to have it on our toolbar anymore so you can go for something like for instance uh, horrify with stalker or something more defensive like this or the AoE it's completely completely up to you I, this weapon is still it's still quite speedy but it is a two-hander and it has decent amounts of damage so maybe you want to pick this I used it for speed running along with uh, this, you know, a Wrath of the Lightning, this gives us 25% movement speed uh, when we have the effect and also when we fear something, Stalker, Horrify, we gain 60% movement speed, so we were getting insane amounts of movement speed, this was auto-casting and all I had to do is every now and then click the Soul Harvest just to detonate the mobs and all our cooldowns would always be refreshed. <sighs> I feel like that's about it. If you have any questions, just leave them in the in the comment section. I will still go over the Paragon points and then I'm going to show some gameplay. But as for this section, I hope this was informative enough. And yeah, for Paragons, if you got, if you got questions, just leave them below. I'm just going to say it now if you can't make it through the rest of the video. Uh, for Paragons, I, pr I prioritize intelligence. However, you should have movement speed capped. Uh, this the cap is 25 it stacks with movement speed from your gear right there are outside sources but paragon levels and movement speed from gear is capped at 25 so my recommendation is to get 25 movement speed out of that but uh, for me you know I'm, I, I prefer the pure stats right now because I don't do enough damage I try and push the higher 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 greater rifts uh, so I don't, I don't do, I feel like I don't do enough damage, so I just straight up went for the int, and it's also a defensive mean, right? Uh, but I would prioritize int, vid, movement speed, and then maximum mana is really good if you have the mana problems, but uh, the other stats are just simply better. Uh, this definitely you prioritize cooldown reduction, then depending on your crit chance or crit damage, uh, you pick one or the other. Uh, the way people do this is 1% crit chance equals 10% uh, crit damage. So try and look at your stats and uh, calculate which one is going to be better for you. Uh, I kind of go by that rule and it seems to work, but definitely the first stat you should max out is cooldown reduction. Uh, this is also dependent on your character. If armor is better for you, get armor. If resist all is better for you, get resist all. If you like life, life regeneration, go with that. If life percent feels strong, go with that. Completely up to you. For me, armor seems to be the best, and then uh, resist all is working out great as a secondary stat. Um, for this, honestly, life on hit is not that strong, but it is quite helpful. I am going for the gold find right now because I just need a gold, but uh, the way I would do this right now probably would be resource cost, uh, cost uh, resource cost reduction so that you don't have mana problems and then life on hit or the other way around obviously if you need the if you need the gold go for that if you don't need the gold don't go for it it's up to you and what's in what state your character is in 
But yeah, I'm gonna. I'm on currently on Torment 3, actually. Let me log on over to. Uh, I'd say like Torment 6. Just to show a little bit of gameplay. How exactly the build works. Let's get in there. And yeah, I'm powering on 269. Nothing too special. Never used any EXP gear. Just a couple days worth of play. Let's go into Holes of Agony. Just a quick display of what the build does. So we get our pets. Uh, we use our haunt, you know, we use our Locust Swarm, you see that it's spreading, and then we pop our Soul Harvest, and we deal a lot of damage. You see that the haunt persists on the mobs, and there's a goblin. And you try and, you try and rely on the cooldowns, use the, use the Piranato, boom, you know? So, again, if there is, hopefully I'm gonna find a, uh, bigger pack of mobs. Try and stay close to the mob so that you're in range and boom, see, all the cooldowns are recovered. If you do something like this, this is where the cooldown recovery comes in. It helps us recover this faster. Right. Obviously, you can also leave just mobs behind. Uh, you don't have to kill everything, but you can leave mobs behind and they're gonna die. And there's a, there's a pack, Torment 6 pack, pretty sketchy stuff. You can slow it down with the haunt. I'm kinda taking my time here, but in general, you should run in. Boom! Pop it with the soul harvest, and they they blow up. If you have something like a like a furnace or uh, maybe a soul keeper, obviously this does a lot more damage. But yeah, try and get your haunt on the target. Try and debuff it with the piranhas. Boom! See, he popped in. This guy survived, but that's okay because we reset all our cooldowns, and we can soul harvest him immediately after. Try and recast your haunt before you before you blow shit up with soul harvest uh, but if you're just approaching the mob then it's completely fine the problem with the build is single target that's for sure rift bosses are incredibly problematic you let them spread a little bit and blow, them out, blow him up uh, it's definitely single target I'm still working on a fix but I don't really see anything that worthwhile I'm not gonna pick up the shrine but yeah you see just to buy yourself some time use the piranados Use the Locust Swarm, you know, let it spread. I'm, again, taking my time a little bit and then blow him up. Uh, I'll try and find another pack and maybe show you how this works a little bit faster. And sometimes you don't even have to Not debuff, you can yet. just pop the Soul Harvest. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll maybe try and find another pack just to see, just for you guys to see how this goes if we, if we actually try and push it. But you can see that even with this not very optimized setup, it's still working out quite well. Um, to my surprise, in all seriousness, because I thought that two-handed weapon is going to be such a big necessity that I'm not going to be able to jump past it or having a furnace. But it does do, it does do enough, right? So, boom, boom. Those mobs we can debuff further. Boom. Music keeps stopping. We're on the look for a bigger pack of some elites. Try and obviously use everything as much as possible to... You see I only cast once and then I this I can cast on the move and that refreshes the cooldown of our spirit walk. So that really helps us out and there we go. There's a pack. Boom, boom. I don't really have a, another thing right now but we refresh our cooldown and there we go. Pretty fast, right? I didn't have a piranha's cooldown, so not even not even that fast, but it still worked out. Uh, leave a soul harvest and I mean leave a haunt in there, and you get the idea. Maybe you find one final pack. Not ready yet. See, all these are jumping from the previous pack, so again, mana is not really that big of a problem. I keep saying again, I keep saying mana. But hopefully, you guys will understand that this video is kind of difficult for me. But you can see the soul, the the haunts travel behind the mobs. They keep traveling. They keep looking for spirits. I thought that the AOE on them is very tiny, but it's actually huge. Like they seek out mobs even a screen, two screens away, which I find amazing. Let's debuff these because they're bigger mobs and bam. 
You can just leave that there. You can see that these are all simple mobs. I don't know, you can look at the XP bar just to see how, how they're continuously dying. And to refresh our spirit walk. We pop those guys. Okay, where's this last pack? Hopefully I can find it. Maybe not. See, I even casted it without a purpose. Boom. Spirit walk always up. A little bit sketchy situation. Cast a couple haunts. Boom. And you see, we don't really... We don't really... Uh, we don't really get hurt much, right? So... It's really... It's really cool in that sense that it feels really skill based. Okay, there we go. There's some mobs. Boom. Boom. Burn out of them. And blow them up. And they're all dead. No problem. Just like that. Torment 6. We can clear it. No problem. So, I hope this was informative to somebody. I know that this build has been done before. And I know it's not too interesting. But this is just my perspective on it. And hope it's hope it helps somebody out, you know. But thanks very much for tuning in. Thanks for checking out the video. Uh, thanks for viewing the Diablo 3 content. Hope to see you guys around where maybe in the future I'll be able to make more informative videos uh, with cooler concepts, right? See you guys around. Bye-bye.